Hi, I'm Neil Hunt. I'm the digital content lead of TV Connect, and I'm here with Richard Lindsay Davis, CEO of DTG. Good Thank morning. you for joining us. Um, so, DTG is 22 years old. Digital television in the UK is 20 years old this year. What's changed in that time? It's changed. The interesting point is, it's changed every year during that entire period. And I think there, there, are, there are step change moments where we, where, you know, in the past we went from black and white to colour, or then we went to digital television, and now we're in this kind of hybrid world, and then um, many technologists in the industry have already crossed the Rubicon of thinking that we're going to go to an IP-only world at some point in the future. Um, but it continues to transform constantly, um, and that's what's exciting about it. The challenge for us, of course, is as it's become more, become more complex, um, you know, I become more cognitively aware where we're, you know, it's data driven and, um, and much higher resolution um, video and audio. Um, how do we deal with these things as an industry to still make sure that, I guess, putting ourselves as the proxy of the viewer, we still provide great TV to them? So, that shift to, to IP um, delivery that you mentioned, is that consumer driven? Yeah, to a certain extent it's consumer driven. Um, you know, the, the great success story that iPlayer is, um, was consumer driven. Um, what is interesting, of course, the, the, the rate of growth of on-demand services has slowed. So, um, consumers have very much embraced hybrid. They've very much embraced replacing their PVR or their, I guess, dare say, VHS machine with on-demand. Brilliant. Um, similarly, replacing DVDs with on-demand, brilliant, they've embraced that. Um, what we've also seen, which is counterintuitive, particularly sat here at TV Connect, we've seen a growth in DTT homes in the last year in the UK. So in the last couple of years, DTT homes have grown by about a million to around 11.4 million homes. Um, and what that tells us, I think, is that we're going to be in this hybrid world for some time to come. Um, and there are great opportunities to, to make, the both, make the best out of both worlds. And then I guess for traditional operators, you know, I, I, you know BBC, ITV, or your, your kind of what were linear, linear playouts, um, how, what are the challenges for them and, and what should they be kind of taking from the kind of the Netflix world that we now exist in? It's a challenge or an opportunity, I guess it's a bit of a cliche, but... Um, but but it's an opportunity, I think. I think you know, they've been leading the charge very much on on-demand, and they continue to do that. Um, they've learned, they've, they've navigated it well from, a, from both an audience perspective at the BBC and, and, uh, and the commercial broadcasters, but also um, from, a, from a monetization perspective. Um, I think there were moments, a bit like we thought in the 90s, that we we're all gonna get rich out of interactive TV. If I saw that um, Domino's pizza ad once, I must have seen it uh, a thousand times during the late 90s. We didn't get rich out of interactive TV. But what we did learn to do was to use interactive TV to engage audiences and keep audiences, similar with, with On Demand. Um, I think the other thing worth mentioning is that um, you know, the likes of Sky very bravely launched Now TV, potentially cannibalizing themselves, I guess. But if, if you're going to be cannibalized anyway, cannibalize yourself. Um, great success story. So I think, I think the industry's learned very much how to work in both worlds, how to work in this hybrid world. Um, and now we've got, I guess, some, some more interesting challenges ahead, is how we work in an increasingly dominated IP world. So you've got this kind of move from, from audiences where instead of going for the kind of big pay TV packages, you mentioned Now TV, you have kind of Sky almost launching its own, against itself, you know, it's, it's cannibalizing it, its own market to, to preserve that market. Um, is that something that, that should be rolled out everywhere? Or how do you see that kind of balance between that kind of big monthly pay packet, you know, a big uh, TV package versus the kind of slim or kind of smaller packages that, you know, the OTTs like Netflix and Amazon Prime offer? I think it, it if, if you polarize your thinking, um, those that want um, you know, sports packages, very specific content, want to be looked after actually you know they what they want it set up and they want it to keep running and, and not not have to worry when when you know when things break down um, those, those customers will still be there um, I think the customers that just want free to wear 
they're not going anywhere either. And, and that, that continues very, very healthy in a market. Um, it's that middle ground that I think is rich pickings. So, you know, so many people that were free to wear only viewers uh, and now have a kind of bouquet of um, Amazon Prime or Netflix or Now TV. So those people that were free to wear only uh, are beginning to pay for pay TV, which is very interesting. Equally, those people that were kind of on the cusp of pay TV, they were, do we want it, don't we want it, um, could well do the analysis and decide that actually they can get what they need from Amazon Prime, Netflix, or, or the various other on-demand players out there. Um, so I think, I think segmenting that, that, it's a bit like um, political elections. Those, those that are wavering in the middle, um, will, they, you know, will they waver up to um, a free, free market with a bouquet of pay services from various providers, or ideally from you if you're, if you're Sky or, or someone, um, but also those, those free viewers, free to, view, free to view or free to air viewers, how do you get them to start paying? So there are real rich pickings in that middle ground. And then finally, if we can just touch upon the advertising model, you know, that's obviously changed. It, you know, it used to be sold on, on viewership, but now it seems to be sold on, on uh, actual kind of numbers and, and demonstrated subscribers, I suppose. You know, how has that affected how your kind of more commercial television operates and, and where do you see it going and, and how should that evolve? I think we've got to be careful when we look at advertising because our advertising is cyclical and, and at the moment, uh, with a, all, us in the UK shivering at the thought of Brexit and you know, and there are lots of global issues as well. And um, the first thing, I, I run a marketing department, the first, first thing that gets cut is your marketing budget. So we, we need to be a little bit careful that, that um, any falls in commercial ad revenues aren't just natural cyclical falls that will increase and, and, and see a comeback. And, and certainly I do think that traditional broadcast advertising um, will, will return um, uh, probably back to where it was a couple of years ago. Um, but as well as that, there's this opportunity to, to, to provide targeted advertising um, and data-driven, very rich AI-driven um, ad environment, um, which, which will bring in incremental revenues in. Um, so I don't think it's either or. I certainly think um, traditional advertising has a long way to run. Um, but we can augment that with more targeted advertising. And then again, there's this kind of middle ground where you, you kind of have, almost have semi-targeted. So you targeted big groups. Because um, after all, broadcast television was all about scale. It's all about broadcasting to huge volumes of, of, of an audience. Um, and I think we can, we can break that down in some very interesting segmentations that are kind of semi-broadcast-like um, and provide that traditional scale that advertisers are looking for. Brilliant, Richard. And just finally, how are you enjoying TV Connect? I know it's early on day one, but how have you enjoyed it so far? Uh, well, we've just had a very stimulating panel, I would say that, because I was, I was just on it. Uh, a very stimulating panel, looking at the issues of IP. Um, so um, our panel was, was high power, dealt with some uh, very complex issues, actually. And I, I guess one of, one of the interesting things about TV Connect is um, this isn't a switchover. This isn't a big transition to, you know, it's not black and white to color to analog to digital, this is something that's going to enrich us as an industry uh, and hopefully enrich the audiences going forward. So, you know, thoroughly enjoying it and um, probably too much to fit in my head in one day. Brilliant, Richard. Thanks very much for your time. Very well.